Well, welcome back to RDWorks Learning Lab. Today we're going to look at manufacturing a Mark III laser pointer. I've had several requests as to whether or not I could make and sell these items. The answer is no. Um, I'm not interested in making money. I'm not interested in sort of a carrying on a career that I've now retired from. So consequently, what I've tried to do is to design something here that anybody regardless of their skill level um, and their workshop facilities can have a go at making for themselves. It's all manufactured from laser cut parts and purchased items. So we're not going to waste valuable time um, watching me program this because you probably all know how to do that now. Um, you don't need to see me cutting it because that's pretty boring stuff. But what we will do is we'll cut to the chase now and we'll start some assembly work. Right, well now that we've cut the pieces, um, let's see how they all go together. Um, <clears throat> these pieces have all been cut, but just one piece, which is this piece here, has had a little teeny weeny bit of machining done on it. It's very simple machining, which you can do with a hand drill. And these holes here have been countersunk and turn it over and the centre hole has been countersunk on the other side to suit an M3 screw so that the screw head, countersink screw head, sits flush with the surface. Like that. That's the only machining involved. The rest of it is to bought parts. Uh, these screws are 35 millimeters long. They're M3 countersink, but you probably can't buy 35 mil long. You've probably got to buy 40 mil. So you'll need a little hacksaw and a file to uh, cut them down. You'll need to acquire some springs. Um, I'll give you all the information about the springs, but you can adapt this design to springs that either you've got kicking around or you know that you can buy. I mean, if you've got a few of these around, which most people have, you may find that in the end here, there will be a spring which you can use. It's too long, you'll have to cut it down, but it might do the job. It's a little bit weak, but it might do the job and save you a lot of money hunting around trying to find a special spring. What I've been able to buy here very cheaply, I think this was only probably about seven or eight pounds, which is what, about 10 or 12 dollars, um, is a laser pointer. Now this is a little module which is a very nice neat little module that's supplied by a German company called Laser Fuchs. Now you can probably look them up online and see whether or not you've got a, a distributor in your country um, but if not you'll probably be able to order them online somewhere. Now this runs off of anything from 3 to 12 volts so you can actually run it with batteries if you want. What I'm going to do is to first of all we'll just bend the cables so that they sit flush on the end here like that. Okay now this plastic washer is required to space this face off the front of your cooling jacket because the tubes just overhang the edge of the jacket and prevent this from sitting flat on the front of your jacket. So you need this little spacing washer on one side. We must first pop these four screws in. So now we've got an M3 by 15 millimeter countersunk screw, which goes on the inside. And that's what that hole is on the reverse side there. Then we can put our little plug on. Now this little plug has got to be modified by you to suit the aperture of the window in the output side of your laser. Mine happens to be 9.9 .9 diameter and it sits on there and we'll just hold it in place with a nut. Let me just tighten the whole thing up. And there we are, we've got our screws so they can't fall out now, which is great for the next part of the assembly. This is the next piece to go on. It's the piece with the slot through the bottom there. So we drop that onto those four screws the laser module now goes in. So first of all thread your cables into the slot like that and then move your laser module around so that it sits in the aperture. 
Okay, next stage is we need one of these little teeny weeny pieces of cheese. And we're going to drop those over there. And then we're going to have one of these three quarter quadrant pieces. And we're going to drop that onto the other two screws. So now we've got an M3 by about 20 long screw, which happens to be a cross head. It doesn't matter what sort of head it is. Um, but it's also got an M3 nut on it. And this is where I've been able to overcome all the machining problems that previously those of you without proper workshop would have struggled with. And it's very difficult when you've got black colour. But if I catch the light right, you'll see that what I've got in here is a little cutout. And that cutout has been designed to sit the flats of the nut into. So you need to wiggle this so that the flats of the nut drop into that slot. And we need to do the same with the other one. There we go, like that. So now we've got two nuts sitting in there which can't rotate because the flats are locked against these surfaces here. And the next piece that goes on, you probably notice it on the first piece, there's a couple of little square holes there. Those square holes are designed to sit over the little pointy bit on the corner of the nut there. But before we do that, what we've got to do is to put in our first pair of springs. So I'll leave you to sort out how you're going to push your spring in, but it's a little bit of a tricky operation. But it can be done. And again, the springs don't fit here. These are six millimeter spring into a five millimeter thick piece of material. So obviously they won't fit. But that's what this little slot is in the next piece for, just to take up the excess material. So we now can pop the next unit on top, which is a piece with the small slots in it. And you probably need to push the um, the sensor towards the middle because the springs are pushing it out at the moment and they're preventing this from going down. So now we can put our next piece of cheese on and our next three quarter quadrant. Now these are M3 grub screws that are about probably 10 millimeters long and they've got again an M3 nut attached to them. And what we can do is, a, is we can, I'm just putting, putting them on the key just so that it's easy for you to see what I'm doing. Again, I'm just going to slip those into that little slot. And then we're going to do the same thing again with our springs. We're going to fight with them and get them into the slot. As you can see, not particularly difficult when you know what you're doing. And then finally, We've only got one piece left, so we better put that on. Okay, so we'll just put a little bit of um, <coughs> tension on those. We'll just tighten them up. I'm now going to show you quickly how to set it up. Now, there is very little in the way of setting that you have to do, but what I would advise you to do is before you take it to the machine, You'll notice at the moment that the brass piece here is sitting over to one side. What we need to do is to adjust these two screws here to make it sit more in the middle. So we can just tighten up these two screws at the front here. So my brass piece is now approximately in the middle of the circle that's at the front there. Now the reason, that's the reason why I've made those grub screws, because you won't need to touch those again. The only things that you'll need to touch now to steer this will be these two screws here. 
Yeah, I'd like you to look the other way while I just make a little bit of a, a temporary connection here. Now it's not exactly a dot as you can probably see, it's more of a, I suppose you could call it a sausage. <laughs> when I screw this back screw down, I can raise the dot up and down from the centre. Okay, now I should be able to move this left and right. So let's go out and try it on the machine. Well sadly we have no elegant mechanical fixing system for this um, because it's such a variable at this end here. So the only easy solution is to do something like this and that is I'm just about to fix some rubber bands around the side that's difficult to get to and then we're going to <coughs> put this so that our two screws are facing us if we can. I've got my tube laying back approximately with the um, water inlet and outlet pipes at about 45 degrees and what I'm going to do is to put first of all we're going to put we're going to plug this little pin here into the hole out of the tube and then I'm going to bring one of these over the top and then the bottom one is slightly more difficult I'm going to have to get one and then two I put two rubber bands one way and the more rubber bands you can put on the better because it will be more stable well it's crude but effective so we'll now turn the LED on there we go. So it's not quite in the centre of the mirror at the moment, but what we're going to do is have a go at trying to steer it onto centre. So, am I going the right way? No, there I am, I'm going the right way now. And I don't think it needs to go up and down much. And I'm just doing that with the two screws. Now because it's a line, I think we're going to have to choose one end or the other to make our centre. And I think we'll choose the um, what you can see as the right hand end and we'll make the right hand end of that, we'll assume there's a dot on the right hand end and we'll make that the centre. But hopefully you'll see that as I move that from one end of the traverse to the other, it stays perfectly still. So we know that this axis and this mirror are perfectly lined up. Just so that I've got a reference there. We'll put the dot on that line. Now the interesting thing that's happening here, if you watch the head as I move it across, you can see that the dot is sitting right on the, on the line as it was at the front of the machine. And as we move across to the middle of the machine, can you see the dot going down? And then here we are back at the front of the machine again. So at that point there, halfway along the machine, that dot has moved down by what, one, one and a half millimetres? And then it moves back up again. And that's nothing to do with the slides at all. So. I can cause that movement by just putting a small amount of load on that mirror mount there.